Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the live show for Save the Day by Morgan Matson. So I am Haley. Uh, you are on my channel, Haley in Bookland. But we are going to be joined by Morgan Matson, and we are just going to be having. It's going to be spoiler free. Like we won't be spoiling anything. So if you haven't read the book yet, that's totally okay. But we are just going to be having a fun discussion surrounding the book. So I'm here with my co-host. <laughs> yes, um, I'm Maureen from the channel Maureen Kiwi, Morgan Matson fangirl forever. So that's me. <laughs> and uh, I'm Emma. I'm from the channel Emma Books and Morgan Matson's books for some of the first like books I read when I joined BookTube. So I'm really Aww. excited to be here discussing her books with her and all of you. Yeah, yeah, I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. I think we're all very excited for this. So yes. Uh, I'm just gonna add Morgan in here so she can introduce herself too. All right, hi Morgan. Hi, hi everybody. It's so good to see you. Good to see good you too. You. Thank How's you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm so excited. Absolutely. So um, we thought to start out, you could tell us like in your own words, what Take Me Home Tonight is about. Sure, so Take Me Home Tonight uh, is a story, it all takes place over one night as two best friends, Kat and Stevie, they're theater kids, they're polar opposites, take the train from their Connecticut suburbs into New York City. And they think they're just gonna have a regular night, they're gonna go have dinner, they're gonna go see a play. And they're barely off the train in Grand Central before everything starts going wrong. Suddenly they're dealing with family drama and exes and irascible cab drivers and unexpected Pomeranians and no phones. And so it becomes this wild night where everything that could go wrong can go wrong. Um, but over the course of it, the girls begin to realize things about their friendship, things about themselves, what they actually want. And, you know, by the end of the night, they've come a lot closer to a truer version of themselves and to each other. But they just need to make it home back to Grand Central before the clock strikes midnight. And not sure they can do that. So that is uh, Take Me Home Tonight. Mm, I literally just got chills. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, so good. <laughs> It sounds amazing. When you said the Pomeranian, literally my favorite thing about it was when I opened my package for my book and there's literally the Pomeranian on the back. <laughs> it's the back jacket. It's so yes. amazing. That was the first thing I saw when I, when I opened it. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. it's absolutely iconic. Like, oh I my like gosh. it because it makes it seem like maybe the Pomeranian wrote the book. That's like, absolutely. Uh, you need to make a new bio for him just like right here. <laughs> Because I feel like that's always like like John Grisham or James Patterson gets yes. the like full back jacket photo. And so <laughs> yeah. Like, this is the author yeah. of the book. It's so funny. Yeah. So oh I'm goodness. curious if this is like a a like uh like photo Pomeranian, like a Pomeranian model, or if this is a dog of yours or that you oh, know. I wish. I wish. Sorry, Murphy. Um, but <laughs> Everyone's been asking me that. They were like, where does this Pomeranian come from? And I'm like, I don't know. Um, I know the woman who designed the cover, Lucy, loves Pomeranians. And so when I was writing a dog in the book, I wrote it like as a little like nod to her. Oh, like, nice. oh, Lucy would have a lot of fun with this. And then I didn't realize that this would happen. So yeah. <laughs> don't, don't use Pomeranians lightly uh, <laughs> because then you have the bag jacket. I love it. I it so much. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> oh my god. I love that so much. Oh um, so we you said theater girls, so that's yes. who we're focusing on. So yes. I was wondering, what's the last show that you have seen? That's like a depressing question because it's like, oh god, <laughs> like it was back in 2019. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I'll have to like think about that. I saw Mean Girls with my friend Jenny Han and another friend um on Broadway. I saw Hamilton for the third time um, with my brother and my sister-in-law. Uh, I, I, but like, it's like all a, a mix of, I yeah. just didn't think it would be the last show. And I had all these Broadway tickets and all these plans. And uh, the one that kills me is last September, I was supposed to see the music band with Sutton Foster and Hugh Jackman. And oh. then we were like, no music band. And I was like, no. Oh, no. Um, but What's I, your favorite? Fit musical ever? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. If you can, you can pick more than one. If you, have I was like one. trying to think about this question, and like every time I thought of one, I was like, no, I can't forget about this. Um, <laughs> I mean, like I feel like I also think there's like differences. I'm like such a theater girl. Sorry, this is, like might go on for a long time, but um, I also think there's a difference between like musicals you love and like amazing performances of musicals you've yeah. seen. And, like I like because I feel like Into the Woods is probably one of my favorite musicals. 
but I don't think I've ever like seen a professional production of it. I just love the music and I love the story so much. Um, but I feel like Hamilton, like nothing, I, I like went into it very cold, which I was like, like deliberately not listening to the soundtrack, not trying to like find too much about it because I wanted to be blown away. And I was, I, I feel like I've never had an experience like that in the yeah. theater before. So yeah. how about you guys? Oh, I oh. also love Hamilton. Yeah. I've seen it twice. I saw it um, once in San Francisco and once in Detroit, and uh -huh. it was so great. Uh, I also love Wicked, though. I haven't seen like a ton because I'm in Canada and like uh -huh. they're all kind of far away from me, but I have seen a few and like always a great experience. I'd say probably Hamilton is my favorite, though. Mm -hmm. Have you listened to Come From Away at all or seen it? I haven't yet because I want to see it, yeah. but like I've heard so many amazing things about it and it's literally like everything that I love about Canada too. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was like, I so badly. I saw it on Broadway and afterwards they always say, if there's any Canadians in the audience, come on up, you'll come backstage, you'll meet everyone. And oh, so amazing. like, you gotta you go. To this is yeah, your yeah. baby gotta come to New York. When the borders <laughs> open again, first thing I do. <laughs> come from away. Yeah, amazing. I think the last musical that I saw was actually mean girls and i'm oh i'm thinking we're Haley and morgan were you yes was, it, was that the yes. last thing you saw when we all went yeah to surprisingly girls? i oh live gosh. right up in new york city and i never ever go to shows surprisingly <laughs> <laughs> but i loved mean girls and i watched hamilton on disney plus and it's so great um and not a musical but i love the um cursed child production i saw that a couple of times mm -hmm. it's so ah, wonderful i've heard so good. about that so good um, I, my last show was actually in like February. It wasn't Broadway, but my mm -hmm. friend. Right was, the wire. My yeah. friend was in a show in Atlanta that was mm -hmm. like a Korean adaption to uh, an American show. Is beautiful. Like the sh the stage was all like digital and it had a mm -hmm. round table and it was like wow. two people and they like oh, moved gosh. set pieces on and off. It was amazing. And he was like a crooner that was like. It was about two robots and he was like oh the one that they were obsessed with. It was so fun. But like favorites, I mean, Hamilton is one I can remember like buying tickets whenever they performed on, like I was already obsessed, but like they performed at the Tony's and they opened up a block and I was like, nobody's seen this. I'm buying tickets. <laughs> and I got like a $200 ticket. I was like, yes, this is my moment. And then also um, my, I really really loved seeing Dear Evan Hansen with Ben Platt because like yeah, it's Ben yeah. Platt so I have like never wept that much in a show before I was like oh like they need to give people like tissues like as, like with your playbill you also get with like, your playbill. like you're gonna need this here you go enjoy the production like oh my god and like the last number kills you and I'm like you have to be careful same thing with Hamilton like oh Hamilton <laughs> You can't have the last number be a tearjerker because then the lights come up and you're like, oh God, people yeah. just, you know. The yeah. second half okay. Hamilton was just tears the wow. entire way. I was like, started crying, like right after intermission, I was like, all right, we're just crying the whole way through. And then you think you're okay in the finale, you think you're okay, and then they hit the note of the orphanage and you're just like, I'm not okay yeah. anymore. <laughs> The orphanage. Exactly. Oh, I'm, like, right now. I'm like, oh, don't do it, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, oh, so we God. talked about like Broadway. So what is one of your like going out activities that you miss the most after a year of lockdown? Uh, I actually, I mean, I love going to see a play. And I always like, I know this is like controversial. I love to like go have dinner beforehand and then go see the show and then have like drinks or something after but I feel like yeah. I get too hungry like I'm like I never want to be like seeing something and being like when are we eating um yes. uh so I I just I do miss I miss like having and it's like starting to open up a little bit now which is fun but like I just I miss like having a thing you're gonna do with your friends and getting dressed up and like having like a thing to go to and something to like look forward to and I feel like that was the hardest part of lockdown was like there was like nothing on the calendar and it was yeah. just like I always think you need like things to look forward to for me. Yeah. At least. It's like, yeah. it's like, very important. Um, so sorry, turn that off. Um, it, yeah. So I definitely miss that. And I miss sort of the excitement of like, Oh, we're going to go out and maybe we'll do this and maybe we'll do that. Cause I feel like even now as I'm starting to see people and we're all vaccinated, it, it's like all very scheduled. Cause it's like, Oh, we're going to do this. And this is the plan. And we know we'll sit outside and this is the thing. And like, I, I feel like a lot of this book is about like spontaneity and, and unexpected things. And I feel like that's something that really hasn't been able to happen in a year, which is like yeah. kind of strange. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that, that must have been fun to write about in a time of such like monotony and, and mundaneness. <laughs> Well, yeah. I wrote, it was actually, I think it was good because I wrote the whole first draft like in the before times. Um, oh, and then was, right, like, right. revising it. Because um, it was weird because at some point I was like, I'm not writing contemporary fiction anymore. I'm writing like speculative fiction like that exists in another yeah. time. Yeah. Like, this didn't happen. Mm-hmm. That's weird. And people are like hugging on the street. And I'm I, like, sometimes I'd be revising it and be like, step away, be more. <laughs> um, but totally. no, it really was. I feel like I got to like live vicariously a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there yeah. um, a place in New York that you like wanted to re- make sure you wrote into the book and that made it in that you're like, this place is a place I love, but okay. it needs yes. to like live on. It's like kind of embarrassing. It's a hot dog restaurant. Amazing. <laughs> love that. Love so, that. so obscure. So like, New York. They have to go to Grace Papaya on the Upper West Side. It's the best hot dog in New York. They have to get the pineapple drink. Like I was just like, this has to happen. Um, so yeah, I was like very insistent about that. Um, and I like had planned on going back to New York a whole bunch to like do like research. Yeah. Kind of. I was there in March right before everything shut down. And then I guess I was like, well, I guess I'm going to figure this out through the internet. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so I definitely had planned to spend a lot more time. Oh, and also, um, I will say in addition to a hot dog restaurant, um, Belvedere Castle in Central mm-hmm. Park is mm-hmm. one of my favorites. And so there's like a whole little scene that takes place there. Um, just because I feel like I discovered that like kind of late, like I kind of knew it was there, but like then a few years ago was like, there's a castle in Central Park, let's go to it. Like, it's just one of those things you don't think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Belvedere Castle is really beautiful. Yeah, it's really fun. And it feels kind of like a secret, even though everyone knows about it, it feels kind of like this is like a special place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it did definitely make me miss New York and make me want to go back, so. yeah. I'm excited yeah. to read it now because like <laughs> I haven't read it yet, but I'm so excited for it. And especially like where I live, we're still at a stay at home order because <laughs> vaccine mm-hmm. rollout is so slow. So I'm like, anything that will take me out? Absolutely. Oh, no. Will, will it take you home tonight? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> will it take me out? I'm like, will it take you Love home? Love it. Haley, there is a section of this book that takes oh place in God. Canada. I'm just yes. saying. Yes. Yes. Oh. My heart. Um, I love or it. does it? Like, sorry, I don't want to spoil anything. Ooh. But uh. <laughs> I mean, there's hints on the back of the dust jacket. Actually, somebody who got the book texted me the inside and was like, "What is this?" People are so oh confused. I haven't like put it on my Instagram yet because I want to like give people a few more days to read it. But then I'm gonna be like, "Guess what?" Because there's like a whole subplot going under the book, and we have like a, a secondary jacket that kind of refers to that, and that's where Ooh. the cannabis is. amazing. So. That's I so cool. That. That's I was so happy awesome. just to, to give a shout out. So I'm sorry you're still like locked down. That's a bummer. <laughs> Hopefully soon. May 20th yes. is supposed to be the okay. thing, but who knows? Yeah, <laughs> around the corner. Mm-hmm. Fingers crossed. I know yeah. around then I'll be eligible for a vaccine, which is nice. nice. Like yes. we're getting there. Yes. So mm-hmm. that's the first step. The end um, is the end is in sight. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. But like, it'll be exciting. I'll be able to see my sister again because she lives in California. So I haven't oh, seen her oh, since nice. two Christmases mm-hmm. ago. So like, wow. that's my going out activity that I yeah. miss is literally just mm-hmm. like going to California every year. Because that's what I used to do all the just time. Do, just do right. Christmas in June. Just get a tree, Honestly. decorate it up. Yes. And just it. So mm-hmm. yeah, that Not. sounds beautiful. Yes, I think you should do it. I think you should do it. Perfect. Uh, That kind of makes me think of one of the questions that I have written down here. So I feel like for me, FaceTime is an app that I couldn't live without. But with them losing their phones, like what is an app that you absolutely could not live without and you would feel lost without? Oh my gosh. I mean, it was so funny because someone, when I told them the plot, they were like, you write horror books now? Like you write, (laughs) like what are you doing? And I was kind of like, I know it's like the worst nightmare. Um, and I like, as I was thinking about it, I was like, what would I do? Like you think about if you suddenly didn't have a phone, I don't know anyone's phone number. I don't know anyone's email address. Like I was like, oh, maybe I could go to an Apple store. It's like, I don't know anyone's email. Like I could guess, but like, yeah. if you have to like type stuff in, it's like, how do I communicate with anybody? I know no, like my dearest friends, I couldn't even tell you what their area code is. Like, it's yeah. like no idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I definitely feel like if like, if my texting got taken away from me, I would be like, I don't, I don't know what is happening. I don't know how to communicate with anyone. Like, I don't know what's going on. Um, and but I feel like for apps, it would be the maps because I have a terrible sense of direction. Oh, like, same. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> terrible, terrible. Like my friend always tells the story of like we went into a store 
And then we were going back where we came from and I walked the opposite way. And she was like, we yeah. were just here. Like, what is wrong with your brain? And like, to the point where sometimes she would even be like, which way do you think we should go? And I'd be like, right. She's like, we're going left. Cause like, that's how like backwards I am all the time. So I feel like if I didn't have my maps, like even in LA, I use it all the time and I live here and I've lived here for years. It's like mm -hmm. still helping me to kind of like get around. So if I didn't have my maps, I would, I would not be in good shape. What about you guys? I was also going to say maps because I'm, I'm thinking about like, especially like trapped in New York city oh with like all my, all my apps not working except for one. Like I want yeah. my, my maps. Um, I think I could survive with like a lot of like social media, yeah. like social interaction. Like I could survive with like old school phone calls mm -hmm. and letters, I think, but especially like, a night out in New York City, like I need like my maps to know where to go. <laughs> New York is supposed to be on a grid. It's supposed to be easy to follow. It is not. That is a lie. No. And I like everyone's like, it's on a grid. And I'm like, that doesn't help me. Like, mm -hmm. true. I, I mean, I want to say maps because also I don't think I have a terrible, terrible sense of the direction, but I need to know at least the first. Mm -hmm. But and I like want to also say texting, but I feel like if I'm out for a night and I want to like remember it, I want my camera. I want yes, to be able to like a great document yeah. it. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I've practically texts and maps are things I would yes. need. Right. Emotionally, I want, want the one. camera. You want the camera. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, didn't think about, I didn't think about that as an app. I was like, not thinking that it would be taken away from me, but it's a very good point. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, I think maps would probably be my number one, too, because I also have a terrible sense of direction. I've literally lived in the same city my whole life, and I put on maps in my car all the time whenever I'm going anywhere. Like, None of us should okay. not, the four of us should not take a road trip together. It would be bad. Oh, honestly. <laughs> like, We'd be yeah, aimlessly. Yeah. Yeah. We, would, have, we would end up on the wrong roads. Yeah. The yes. longest road yeah. with no. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I was literally just thinking of your Rogers. <laughs> yeah, it's like we'd end up on that road and it'd be like, yeah, so there's like no gas stations for miles and miles. So like, good mm -hmm. luck. I know. Oh my gosh, it'd be awful. It'd be awful. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Um, Speaking of, um, of Amy and Roger, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you, Morgan, was like, what either like book or maybe even just like characters of yours do you think would complement take me home tonight well. So either like mm -hmm. the book of yours that you've written mm -hmm. that is like similar or mm -hmm. cohesive in some sense of the word or like characters from your previous books that you think would get along with like Kat and Stevie and everyone else from the book. Such a good question. Some characters do <laughs> pop up in this. I'm saying <gasps> nothing, I'm <laughs> saying nothing, no spoilers. <laughs> That's and amazing. So I love doing cameos. And this one, I took it a little bit further. Like this one, they're not really cameos. They're like, there's two people from previous books who are like characters who have like multiple scenes and I know. And um, so I'm, I'm just gonna leave it there and let people find it on their own uh, because I'm like, I really wanna tell you, but I won't. Um, <laughs> uh, but I feel like this sort of, I don't know. I feel like it. it's like parts of a bunch of different books. I feel like the, like the section with the scavenger hunt in uh, The Unexpected Everything feels a little bit like that because it's kind of like madcap and fun. And um, so maybe Unexpected Everything, um, just in terms of like, there's um, there's like Stevie, uh, one of her big arcs is uh, her relationship with her dad. And I feel like that's such a big part of Unexpected Everything. Um, and there's there's a kind of like madcap friend group energy to that book. And and there's a dog. So maybe Unexpected, as I'm saying it, I'm like, yeah, I think it's that one. So maybe <laughs> would be like the best pair for this one. I feel like the chaos of Save the Day is just like a sprinkle of that chaos. I'm like, what is wrong with me? The last two books, I'm just like, what's going wrong? It's like, chaos. everything's going to go right. It's going to be a calm, relaxed. <laughs> it's, not, it's not crazy, but it's, it's, cool. nice to, it's nice to dream. That's what makes it fun. Um, exactly. A couple people are asking in the comments, is there a particular order that you have to read the other books in in order to understand the cameos? It's just like a little sprinkle of something there, right? Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I never want, I never want anyone to feel like they can't jump in anywhere because you totally yeah. can. It's I always hate that when I like start reading a book and then like there, it's like oh I was supposed to read two other books and like I didn't get sure. anything that was happening. Like I feel very like left out. Um, and so you can literally pick these up in any order. Um, you know, read them in any order. Um, if you read them in publication order, you might like catch some little references, but it's nothing that you have to have read yeah. the other books before. You can jump in at any moment and read them at any time. Um, 
So like, don't stress about that at all. Like yeah. whatever one you have, you can start. Um, but it's fun because sometimes people read them out of order and then like begin to be like, wait a second. And then they sort of like put yeah. it together. which is also like kind of fun. Um, so yeah. So, but don't, don't stress about it. You can, you can, yeah. they, they all stand on their own hundred percent. Um, so you can read them, uh, in any order you want. Perfect. No cool. Just so Relate. everyone knows <laughs> to make sure. Mm -hmm. Related to this, but not related to your books, what Taylor Swift album uh, fits best <laughs> with this book? Good. I think 1989, because I feel like that's Ooh. her I Live in New York Now album. And I just feel like it has that, like, Welcome to New York, I feel like was such a good song for this book, because it's like, you're a little intimidated by the city, but you're there and it's exciting and you're happy. And also like New Romantics, I feel like that song fits really mm. well. Um, like, and all, little bits from other albums, but I just feel like in terms of, I feel like 1989 is so like propulsive and and it's it's not like red, which is kind of really lingering over the past and like thinking about stuff. It's it's it seems to be more forward looking in a lot of ways. Um, so I feel like that's the one that fits. But I'm also like bringing Taylor being in New York at that time, like to <laughs> my own like knowledge of it. So like, but definitely not neither of the most recent ones, um, which feel much more like contemplative and um, woodsy and less like <laughs> urban. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, I feel like yeah. I want to like just like sidebar with Maureen and be like, let's talk about Taylor Swift right now. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, like that's a big part of any interview we do usually is just like, how about we talk about Taylor Swift for a good like 10 minutes? <laughs> I know, I'm like really tempted to do. I'm like, Maureen, I need to know your feelings about the re records right now. Um, but I will control myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Um, what was your experience like writing this book compared to the others? Because you've written so many by now. So like, what was the experience like? Was it easier, hard? it was easier in some ways like I think that um I recommend a 12-hour book if you're looking for a nice structure like I feel like it's mm. um I'd never done it before I love 12-hour books I think they're so fun yeah. um like they're it, I love to read them because I love feeling like oh we're on this ride and we're going and it's fast and things are happening and um like uh Nick Leon's The Sun is Also a Star and Jennifer e. Smith's yeah. uh, Statistical Probability of Love at First Sight. Like there's just like such something so fun about like diving in, having a whole experience and then it's over in a day. Um, and so I'd never written one and I really liked it because I feel like it gives you a really nice structure. And so I felt like that was, it was easier in that way because I feel like with Save the Date, I really struggled with it because that's a three day book, which is hard because I couldn't tell how much I was supposed to say and how much I was supposed to kind of be like, and then other stuff happened, but then it was back to, it was like, and I feel like with a 12 hour book, you're kind of telling everything because you don't have enough time to like skip over anything. Um, so that was really fun. Um, and it was really fun because then when they meet people, it's like, you're meeting them and they're doing the meet cute. And it's not like, this is my long history with this person. It's like, it feels very like fresh and fast moving. Um, so, so I really liked doing that, but it was also tricky for me because I tend to write long books and my editor kept being like, get them on the train, get them to New York. And I was like, but Connecticut and their theater program. And he was like, get them on the train. And so it was like the, the pacing was like a struggle for me. Cause I like, I really wanted to root them as characters in the world they were leaving before they went to the city, but I also wanted to get them into the city. And so that was probably like my biggest struggle is sort of like establishing enough. So they feel like real people in their hometown, but then also getting them on the train. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love the way you described um, like 12 hour books, uh -huh. like as, as yeah. having like, you have to describe everything and go into detail because you don't have time to skip ahead. Like, I feel exactly. like that's a really good way to place it. And I love single day, couple yeah. two. like they're so fun to read. And like yeah. mo single day movies are really fun too. Like, I feel like it's just like a really fun, like little subgenre. Um, and, and it also feels like weirdly like possible, like, oh, if yes. I was in the right set of circumstances, this could happen to me too. Cause it's not like all these other things have to happen. It's like, no, if you're just like dropped in, you meet the right person you have this adventure, you could totally do it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It feels like um, the things that take, like when scenes take time in books, it feels mm -hmm. almost realistic compared to when you have one book that's supposed to take over like multiple months Ooh. or a year, there's so much skipping around. So it makes oh, you really? feel like more involved in the process. And like, what's so great, I love it when people are like, I read this in a day. Like, I love that because it means they like couldn't put it down. There's also, yeah. people, but that took me two years. But uh, for the most part, <laughs> I love it. And like, what's really fun about a 
a 12 hour book is you're almost reading it in real time. Like you're yeah. almost like, if you're reading it fast, you're almost kind of like living it with them in the like real time frame, which is like a really fun thing. Yeah, exactly. What would your idea of the best 12 hours be? Oh mm -hmm. man. Um, <laughs> I was like thinking about this. I was like, oh, it's such a hard question. Um, <laughs> definitely, I definitely feel like if you could like order up an adventure, that would be fun. Like fewer, yeah. fewer things going wrong than happened in this book. But I feel like the the sort of like the most memorable nights I've had are like the nights where I'm like, oh my gosh, it all it it never happened when everything went absolutely right. You know, it always I feel like you remember the ones where like a wrench was thrown into the plan and then it ended up being good, or like you were supposed to go somewhere and then you couldn't find it, so you went to this other place and that ended up being exciting. So I feel like yeah you always have to have like a bit of the unexpected and like a bit of something you didn't plan for um, because that can that can always be really fun. And I was thinking about this, I was like, oh, because there's a great quote of like, I forget how it begins, but it ends with, but then there would be no story. And like, mm -hmm. I kind of love that idea that like yeah. all the best stories we tell are things that like, you, you're never like, I'm gonna tell you this great story about when everything worked out for me. It's like, okay. Like it's, you know, I feel like the best stories are all like, and then this happened, but then this other thing happened and then it was a success. Like you have to have the, the sort of things that go wrong. So I definitely feel like I would wanna be with my friends. I would wanna be in a fun city. I would want there to be great food. Um, and then like something like excitement and unexpected gets thrown into the mix. And uh, that's, that's kind of, I think like a recipe for an ideal night. How about you guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a hard too. question. Yeah. It is a hard question. See? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> depends yeah. on. Oh, you go. You go. No, you go. Sorry. <laughs> no, you go. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I think, like, I like just very chill, mm -hmm. like, nothing. But you're right about the unexpected things make the story. And I'm such, like, a massive planner and, like, planning ahead that it's it's so hard for me to accept that but it's so true like some of the best times have been things that i, I didn't plan for mm -hmm. but i think i would be with like family and friends mm -hmm. and my dog and just yeah. like i don't know like going for a walk somewhere nice like that mm -hmm. just like relaxing adventurous day if that's, that's possible so lovely. Thank you. That <laughs> yeah, yeah i feel like I'm slipped between like two different types of best days. Like there's mm -hmm. kind of like what Haley's talking about, like the chill best day where I'd probably yeah. go to like a bookstore and hang out with right. friends and right. get, you know, go to like a coffee shop or a diner mm -hmm. and then just like chill and have like an, like an, that's the kind of day that I don't want to run short of the plan. Like I just want yeah. it to be like easy and fun exactly. and expected as planned. Yeah. But then I also like, you know, like the pre COVID like mm -hmm. times out where I'd be out until like 5 a.m. in the city with my friends yeah. and dancing at a club and whatnot. Like those yeah. are really like best nights to me too. So mm -hmm. maybe, maybe like a, a combination of both or like a morning yeah. relaxation yeah. or a night of like wild. Start rest, cozy, like. And then you go out and you get yeah. the best of both worlds. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Um, sure. I'm going to veer for the path my best day best night is disney world the end oh, nice. <laughs> I was like, sorry. Really i feel like call. also could be like you know like a really fun day in like a bigger city specifically mm -hmm. new york i feel like a lot mm -hmm. of my good days but like i'm thinking forward because now that i'm vaccinated i'm going to disney yeah. for my 30th birthday so i'm like Yay, that's yeah. my best day going to disney and i love it that is a great day exciting. that's a great day yeah, mm -hmm. honestly, so yeah. many things to do. <laughs> truly, truly. <laughs> Amazing. Um, does anyone else have any questions or anything they wanted to add? Um, I actually saw a comment in the the um, chat yeah. that I liked that I wanted to ask myself. Um, I think it's Kaylee or Kale um, asks, is there a romance in Take Me Home Tonight? Mm -hmm. There is, of course, I'm not gonna leave you without some swoons. So there's a very kind of like meet cute romance where uh, Kat, one of the main characters, meets this guy named Carrie, who I had so much fun writing and he's very sweet. He was like one of my favorite boys I've written. Like it was, and he sort of like showed up, like he was like, here I am. And I was like, oh great, that's, that's awesome. You're like fully formed. Um, okay. <laughs> and so there's definitely, that romance going on. Um, there's another kind of little side romance going on with their friend, Terry, who's back at home. She has her own little romance happening. And then Stevie is sort of um, dealing with an ex-boyfriend. And so there's, there's, they're sort of sorting out some stuff of theirs. So she doesn't have like a true romance, but she's kind of dealing with romance stuff, but like the true kind of like meet cute swooniness. 
that's with um, Kat and Carrie. But like, I kind of say like the love story of this book is the two girls, like, and their friendship. Like, oh, and, you know, because that's kind of how I felt in high school. Like, you know, like boys were fine, but like my like true loves in high school were like my friend group and my best friends. And like, you know, they're still the ones that I talk to and I'm close with and we've been at each other's weddings and godparents to each other's kids. And I just feel like that was like my like true loves in high school. So I sort of wanted to write a book that was kind of celebrating that and like your best friend in high school and like how important and kind of all encompassing for bad, for good and bad that that, that can be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah stories fun. about friendship is like, my favorite type of YA. Yeah, same. Just to focus on like two really close friendships with some some romance and some swooning on the yep. side, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the stories that are really about friendship are like yeah. my favorites. Yeah, for that sure. Was, um, I have a question. I know that there was a poll that um, you put out on Instagram that was like, "Are you more Cat or are you uh -huh. more Stevie?" Yes. So which one, which character do you relate to more? Is it like both of them are kind of have elements of uh -huh. like you or? Yeah. It's so <laughs> funny, yeah. Because I feel like it was like one of those things. It took me like six books to be able to write about this, but like Cat is very much who I was in high school. And when people are like, "She's annoying," and I'm like, "I know, I was." <laughs> <laughs> Like she's like she's too intense about the theater department. It's like yes, I was. So like she's very much kind of who I was in high school. Like obsessed with my theater department and like so kind of focused on it and a little not annoying, but like very kind of like this is what I want and and a little bit tunnel vision. And I feel like Stevie's much more who I am now. Um, it, it's it's a it's sort of like I get to be both people because it's like she's a little more calm and like more kind of able to like see sometimes to a fault like think more about other people than about herself and so I do feel like it is like a combination of the two of them um and I basically like handed the book to my mother and was like you were right I'm sorry <laughs> like you were right about like so much and she was like it's really fine um but uh it's like I like I think it's I'm really kind of a little bit of both, which is fun because they're they're two very distinct personalities. But um, yeah. there's a reason that they're best friends and that they come from each other. So it was, but on like the 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 um, the thing that you voted for, I was like literally split down the middle. I was like, don't make me choose between Ruffles and Doritos. I love them both. Like <laughs> <laughs> the hard choices. Really. Yes, I was like, that's a, I like came up with those questions, and then when I was asked them of myself, I was like, how do you pick? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, uh, anyone else have any last things to add or? No, no, I good. think. Okay. We got cool. to all I my questions. I just wanted to make yeah. sure no one else had any questions or anything. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for joining us tonight, Morgan. This, this was, was so, so much fun, fun to chat with you. Guys. Thank you all so much. It was so great to see everybody. Um, mm -hmm. I hope that, you know, at some point in the future, there'll be book on and we can do this again in person. I feel like Maureen yes. and I were always finding a spot to film a thing. Oh, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere and the so Javits just like in a corner. I love it. We were always <laughs> like, let's go over here. And we'd like run over there and like film mm -hmm. all the stuff. And I loved it. So amazing. Yeah. 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 Book convention. Honestly. Um, so everyone watching, remember, Take Me Home Tonight is in yeah. stores now. And if you're looking for a super fun Kadex story of two girl best friends in New York City, it sounds like the book for you. Yay. Honestly. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Great. Well, thank you so right. much, everyone. Thank and you, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. <laughs> thank Bye. you, Morgan. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Bye. Bye.